you so much for uh, for joining Lab Code Agents and uh, being willing to share all of your knowledge. Thanks, uh, Alex. Good, good to have you. Love hanging out with you guys. Love sharing. We're gonna have a good time. Looking forward to it very much. Absolutely. So let's kick this thing off. Felix, did you have a, a direction or a question for Barino right to start? Yeah, you know, Barino, you are a great real estate coach. You, you, everything that you say makes perfect sense. It's, it's simplified for all these agents, but I'm really most interested in starting with your story. Going from homeless, living in your car, to being a top producer, and, and then, wow, you've, you've had your real estate license now, I think, what, over three decades? So I want to hear about uh, all of that transition to, to start. Uh, uh, what a story. I'll give you the condensed version, Felix. Would that be cool? Because we got oh, yes, some practical yes. stuff that I want to share with you guys sure. because of this whole crazy shenanigans going on. My presentation is by the way, rated R, and it's not a persona or a shtick. That's just how I speak, and I believe you guys want authenticity and realness. With all this plastic shit going on around here, a little bit of real deal will probably help. So here's the story. As you can tell by my accent, I was born in Scotland. No, not really. I was born in Czechoslovakia. Um, both of my parents were actors. My mom still sings, performs. She's still doing television right now. They're, of course, in quarantine, but that's what they do. And I was starting doing movies. I did my first commercial. It was an ad, a print ad, photograph ad for a diaper when I was four months old. And legend has it, my mom still has a copy of that magazine somewhere. So one of these days, she might dig it up from blackmail with it, which would be fun. So I started with that. I did television. I did movies. And uh, when I was 18, I got in trouble with the communist government in Czechoslovakia. I opened my big mouth. I know that's hard to believe for a quiet introvert like me, but I got in trouble and I got blacklisted, which means I couldn't work. I couldn't study. I was at the time studying acting and film production. And so I got kicked out and they kind of put a kibosh on everything. So um, because I had worked with uh, productions in London and in Los Angeles, I just decided I'm going to bail out of communism and Czechoslovakia, pack my stuff, went to London first and from London to LA thinking I'm going to be the next Arnold, you know, accent, no accent. I barely spoke English at the time, but I figured, Hey, if Arnold or Van Damme, or I don't know who else was big back then could make it in Hollywood. I could too. Minus the muscles. That was one thing I was lacking, which was proven to be the critical element missing. So I discovered how difficult and challenging the situation was in the film industry back then. And I ran into an ad. I saw an ad in a local, like a penny saver for a real estate school. And so I'm like, this is cool. I don't have to own the house. I get to sell the house. I get to make 6%, pay, get paid a lot of money, drive a Benz, wear my Armani and Rolex. Sign me up. I like that. And they will teach me the shit for free. Can't get any better than that. Many of you probably had those big dreams, right, guys? Do you remember the first time you got into real estate? I did. I already calculated how many hundreds of thousands of dollars I'm going to make and fly jets and bring my family over and all that. But as you know, the reality was very different. And... Um, this is the part where all these gurus and great coaches will tell you how they crushed it their first year and closed a million deals and all that. I failed miserably. Now, to my defense, this was a brilliant idea, getting into real estate in 1989. So picture this. Interest rates about 14% on the best day. 40% of our inventory foreclosures. Bunch of REO properties. Nothing was moving. Price is sliding down so fast you won't believe it. So not the easiest time to be a real estate agent. So for after two years, I became homeless. I was literally got kicked out of a little house. I didn't even rent a house. I just rented a little room on the back of this house that was backed up to a 405 freeway. It was going right behind us. And so they kicked me out, flat broke, slept in my car, big Cadillac DeVille. I don't know if you guys remember. It's like, you know, it was about 70 feet long. It was giant. And... Um, so I'm like, this is not going very well. This is not the Armani and the Benz and all that that I was envisioning. And I, I realized something that I think is just as important today as it was back then, that my biggest problem was not that I was not working hard enough. I was working my ass off. I was door knocking. I was doing all these things that you're supposed to do to get leads. My biggest hurdle, as I discovered through Tony Robbins, actually, was my mindset. I was carrying around this luggage that I brought from Czechoslovakia, other than the funny accent, that money's Great hard accent. to come by, real estate is hard, being rich is difficult and almost unattainable for most, and you have to struggle to achieve success. So whenever there was an opportunity, you know, to get a listing, make a good money, help clients, I would always figure out a way to mess it up, always somehow sabotage myself or, or 
pull the plug on it last minute. Somehow, somewhere, I always screwed things up. So that money was hard to come by and real estate was hard and I was supposed to struggle. And I fought it really hard at the beginning. You know, I thought this is the, the new age, airy fairy, new age thinking, you know, oh, you're going to sit on the couch and visualize money and they're going to fall in your lap bullshit. But I had to admit, it's not hard work, then it's got to be something else. And the moment I start shifting my mindset, my life and my business and everything else started shifting as well. Fast forward 10 months, I got my own condo. I got my first Benz. I took my wife to Venice, Italy on a two week vacation and I turned things around. And the biggest chunk of that, yes, there was some strategic changes I made in my business, obviously. First was I started shifting to expired listings. But really the foundation was the mindset that really was shaky at first, but that's why it wasn't holding. And then later became solid when I realized this really is the control center that controls the income, the business, the experience in life that we have. And as much as I didn't want to admit it to myself, once I shifted that, everything else just shifted. So I want to share with you guys in a moment, five tips or strategies where I see some of the parallels between my journey through tough times and the tough times we're going through right now. There are some parallels and there are some solutions that I think these five things will help you. But I need an agreement from you. And that agreement is do not lower your goals. Hold due course to whatever you want to accomplish this year. And these things, these things will help you, will help you stay that course. Because just like I had to shift from there is not enough and I have to struggle and that's to be hard to I can do this. Others have done it. It's happening all the time. You need to do the same. Going in thinking, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. Nobody's doing anything. Market is dead. I can't do, I have to stay home and all that. If you're going to hold on to that, there's a part of your brain, and I became kind of a student studying psychology and neurobiology, called reticular activator system. And we all have that, and it's built in. It's the same thing like when you buy your first Rolex, something you notice everybody's wearing, or you buy a red car, everybody's driving a red car. It's not like they magically appear. It's because there's a part of your mind that starts focusing on something that you program it to focus on. Awareness. So if you start programming to, there's plenty. There are listings out there. There are buyers out there. There are sellers out there. There is money out there. It will start showing up. And the more evidence you start noticing, the more it's going to show up. The more you believe it can show up, the more it's going to show up. But it's that loop you need to reset that I had to reset that will set you on this different journey. Not better, not worse, just different. The difference is, and the shift that happened in my life was, I grabbed the steering wheel. I didn't just let the market, the world, the circumstances out there to determine my life and my income and my success and everything that comes with it. I became the owner of that. I decided, and I recognized first and then decided, I got to be in control of this. So don't believe that circumstances and situations out there control it. Yes, there are things we do not control. I'll give you that. Of course, nobody predicted this whole thing that exploded in our face. That's true. But there's a lot you control. And the core, the foundation, the engine that drives you control is your mindset. And it's been beaten to death. And everybody tells you, think positive. Yeah, it's easy to say for someone, think positive. But the news and the data and the stuff you see every day, then it's hard to stay positive than just think positive. So I'll give you a couple of things that will help you with that. But going thinking, I got this. I can do this. It's doable. Because what you're going to discover is not only can you survive, this can be the best year you ever had. This can be an extraordinary experience that will make you stronger. Not to mention there are people out there who desperately need now certainty and guidance, and you can provide that. Is that helpful? Absolutely. All yeah, right. great information. Cool. So let's dive in. So the first thing we talk about is the mindset. So I'll give you a mindset morning. This is a morning ritual that I've developed that helps me because I don't know if you guys run, but with all these changes, I used to do Orange Theory and I really loved it and it was a lot of fun and I, I got good results with it, but because we can't, I had to come up with another way to stay in shape and not gain 300 pounds, which would be easy right now, right? So uh, just like when I go on a run, foolishly, first I thought, I'll just put on tennis shoes, put my little, those little Q-tip things, AirPods or whatever they're called, and I'll just go run. 
And the 30 minutes, I'm like, oh shit, this really hurts. So I wasn't doing it right. So I started doing a little research. You need to warm up, you need to stretch. You need to kind of prepare the body for the grueling experience you're about to endure. For those of you who run, you know what I'm talking about. I was a complete newbie to all this. Mindset works the same way. If you want to have a good, productive, profitable day, day where you look back and you go, that's a pretty good day. I accomplished a lot. You warm up. And the warm up I do and the warm up I suggest you start doing is warm up your mind first. And it doesn't have to be anything extraordinary, like you need to do these mantras and all that. It can be something as simple as pick up some good book, something that inspires you, something that kind of gets you in a good state mentally. Because we've been so bombarded with all these news and 90% of it is all negative stuff. You need to take ownership and pick up a good book. Like one I recommend is, I'm always, I've always been a big fan of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, but maybe you don't know that he wrote another great book that for a very long time was very controversial, was not even published after, only after his death, called Outwitting the Devil. Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. Great book on mindset and very relevant in this day. Now, yes, it's, it was written a while back and there are some religious undertones. If you can kind of forget that or kind of push that aside, there's a lot of great stuff that will help you control this computer that controls your life and your income. So start with that, 30 minutes of that. What I also do is I use a planner. I can actually show you. And there's part of it. Let's see, where do I have it? Right here. There's a part of that planner where I just write down I don't want to say goals, more like targets, things I want to hit, because that helps me. This is called a focus planner. Really good stuff. It's 90-day planner. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't get paid by them, but I think it's a really good tool. Because what I do in the morning is focus on what matters to me. Where am I going? What is my path? So you do this for 30 minutes. Now your mind is warmed up. Now you can tackle the day. Now you can tackle the challenges. Start with that. The last thing I do is I look at my vision board. I look at the images of things that represent what I want to accomplish. And this is not just, I want to have a nice car. Nothing wrong with that. Get nice cars. I'm a big fan of nice cars, nice watches, whatever else. But there are also certain metaphors on that vision board of things that resonate, like success you guys, I want you to achieve. That's my mission, is to touch the lives of you guys, Portugal, America, the world, agents like you who are out there doing the good work, being the guide, being the ambassadors, being more than just a typical salesperson. That's my mission. So I have these things, now my mind is warm up, now I can go to work. Start with that. Lay the foundation, because your success is really just four elements. Mindset, systems, skills, and action. That's it. But just like a car, you cannot drive on three wheels, all these four need to be in place. Mindset, systems, skills, and action. You have these four in place, then it's just a matter of scaling it and pointing it in the right direction. You can go. So that's the strategy number one. Strategy number two I'm gonna give you is, most of you, probably all of you are in quarantine like we are. Certain areas have different rules than others, but in most cases, my household, I work out of my house. I have a big studio where we are now downstairs. And I have two teenagers upstairs and a wife. <laughs> so the conditions are different. What usually is a nice, quiet, peaceful house, I do my own thing. Not so much anymore. So to keep sane, but still stay productive, try this method. I call it the 40-20 strategy. What I want you to do is work in a very focused, determined, single purpose, single task way with no distraction. That means there is no phone, there is no computer, there is nothing but your work, whatever that is. Maybe prospecting, maybe following up. We'll go in specific in just a moment. But block out 40 minutes of this like ninja time where nothing else is around you. You simply get that done. And then 20 minutes, fuck around all you want. Do whatever. Go hang out with your kids, have lunch, play a video game, watch television. Nothing is off limits. Then you put it on timer. When the 20 minutes is up, you go back to another 40 minutes. So this way, you spend some time with your kids. You just get out of your system the fact that we are on a lockdown and it's not exactly easy. But you still get the product productivity energy going. You still accomplish things. And you just repeat it. Now, if you do this four times in four segments, not only will it be easier than trying to discipline yourself to lock down for three hours, which is almost impossible for somebody as disciplined as me. And I'm pretty good at it. 
but you will also satisfy that your spouse maybe needs a little break or your kids do want to hang out or maybe you go for a run or maybe you do watch a little television or play a little whatever kids play these days. I don't know. I'm not too big on video games. I like car racing. So do this four times. That's 160 productive focused minutes. Now think about it. If five days a week, you can do 160 minutes of this with high intensity, high focus. You can generate a lot of business. You can follow up with a lot of people. You can bring into new relationships, new connections. There's a lot you can do get done because I've been training real estate agents. I've been at this for over 20 years. And I can tell you, even under regular conditions, very few agents can do 160 productive minutes a day. Very few. Way too many That's, squirrels. Right. Too many squirrels. Exactly. That's exactly right. <laughs> so, if you can do this, you will start building a new habit. It's just like that muscle or me running. You got into that habit. Is, what's the worst that can happen? 40 minutes. You can do anything in 40. Jesus, I can run for 30. It takes me like 35 minutes to complete my run. If I can do that, yeah, you can do 40 minutes of this. Knowing that there's a 20-minute reward, that you can do whatever. So try it. Four of these, four times four. 40. That's 160 minutes where, but here's the catch. The 40 minutes need to be things that really matter, need to be productive things, need to be profitable things. So choosing a new logo or designing your business card, fuck that, that's not productive. We're talking high productivity activities. What does that mean? Lead generation, follow up, nurturing your sphere. Those are the three most important things you need to focus on. And most of those will involve some kind of communication. So do that. Can you do that? The answer is yes, of course you can. The question is not, can you do it? The question is, will you do it? And it goes back to that mindset. How bad do you want those lovely things and vacations and money and peace of mind and providing not just for you, but your family and for future generations, which you can. There's this opportunity out there. So that's the 40-20. Um, the third one I'm going to give you, and this will help you with the 40-20, is plan. Get a simple planner. I, I prefer the paper. I guess it's the psychological thing of using an actual pen that makes it permanent. It's much harder for me to weasel out of something that's been permanently recorded, where if you do it digitally or with a pencil, it's not quite the same. So this has been my preference and I really like these planners. So you're gonna prime, what are you gonna do? When are you gonna do it? What tools are you gonna use? And how will you measure when it's done? So you can measure time alone, that's good enough. If you say, look, I'm just gonna lock myself down for 40 minutes and I'm gonna fire up my dialer and call every expired listing I can get my hands on. That's good enough. Or maybe you'll say, I will not quit until I have five conversations, which we'll get to in just a moment. That's another way of measuring it and being productive and profitable. But set these guidelines. What am I gonna do? Where? How am I gonna know when I'm done? And what tools am I gonna need? So you set yourself up for success. You set the environment up. We also, like in my office here, is there, I have a giant sign I can actually show you. This is hanging on my door. And the rule we have in the household is that unless the house is on fire or somebody's bleeding or dying, they can't come in, knock on the door, or interrupt me in any way. So we have this on the door. So when this is hanging, my door is off limit. My office is off limit. They also know that when my time is up, I'll go upstairs, hang out with them, chat with the kids, check up on them, have a good time, enjoy ourselves. So you balance it out. This will also shut up that drunken monkey, that little chatty voice we all have in our heads that will try to dissuade you, that will try to tell you how the world is coming to an end and nobody's moving and the world as we know is over. Is that good? Is that helpful? Can you do this? So rule one. Strategy one, warm up your mindset. Strategy two, do the 40-20. Strategy three, plan your day in a simple way but clear way. And make it, and this is an important word I learned from my man Frank Kern, make it binary. That means there is no ambiguity. It's either done or not done. You either finished or you didn't finish. It's either win or lost. That's it. Don't give your mind the gray, well, kind of done but not quite. Don't do that. Be very clear because this will not only allow you to be more disciplined with yourself, but you will be able to evaluate, does this really work? Am I getting the result? Am I getting closer to the goals or not? And if it's binary, it's a very easy checklist, yes, no box. You're only, only going to check one of the two, okay? Now, number four, one of those 40 minutes, now if you're really adventurous or if you're my student, make it extra. 
Remember those four things we mentioned, mindset, systems. The third one is building your skills. That means you know how to use those tools that you're using. Building your skills. This is a great opportunity. And guys, please hear me on this. If you're not going to come out of this crisis better, if at the end of this, you're not way better than you were at the beginning, you squandered a lot of opportunity, a lot of time. The issue is not the time. This is not a time issue. We have plenty of time. So what you need to work on is your skill because your bank account is a reflection of your ability to use the tools. In other words, your skills. And right now, you have a great chance to enhance your skills. We have these amazing tools. And I'm a first one to tell you, I love tools. I love gadgets. I love systems. I love all that. And we live in an era where it's broadcast like this a few years ago. Are you kidding me? That would have cost thousands of dollars, professional team, and most people would not be able to do it. It was just too complicated. Now, I can literally grab my phone and go live to an audience of 36, 37, 400,000, whatever right from my phone. So the opportunity is there, but I still need to master my skill. You still need to work on your skill because real estate always has been, always will be a people business. One human being first being aware of another who can help them, building connection or relationship with them, and then helping them. And that process is supported by technology. It's not replaced by technology. There is still that human element, you, where they have to like you. They have to trust you. They have to respect you. Those are all three very important. They like you, trust you, and respect you so they can do business with you. Every listing you've always gotten, you've gotten because they liked you more than everybody else. They trusted you more. They respected you more. Every listing you ever lost, somebody else was there who they liked better, trusted better, and respected more. So these tools help, but it is your skill. How do you open a communication with... Let me give you an example. Let's say... Let's say I have John on my phone who is out of the area. He's not in my area and has a very motivated expired listing. If I gave you the phone, would you be able to build trusting connection very quickly, ask the right questions, and set up right now Zoom virtual listing appointment? How confident would you be that, yeah, I got this? On a scale of one to five. Five being a total rock star, one, oh, forget about it, I suck. This is the skill. It's a skill. I learned early on that because I couldn't compete with agents in my area who had like, you know, multiple pages in Homes and Land magazine and teams. And one of my biggest competitors when it came to expired listings, picture this guy. His name was Lorenzo. And he was about 25, 26, very handsome young man, dressed well, spoke Spanish, which I don't. I know seven words, six out of those are really bad, nasty cuss words. He spoke Spanish. And he would show up in a Lamborghini, a yellow Lambo. So here I am talking to an expired listing, trying to, you know, do my thing in my little Cadillac DeVille. And you can hear a Lambo. You know how you, it has that pitch? Like you, can, you can hear the engine. You can tell that's a Lambo. Mile away. And he pulls up in this yellow Lambo. The door goes, shh, opens the door. Here comes Mr. Lorenzo, suave, you know. How do you compete with that? That was really hard. Jewelry sued the whole thing. So what I discovered was the secret was in communication. If I could develop a relationship with that seller, if I build that connection with them, and I mean authentic connection, not like, you know, those cheesy sales connections, I would win it, Lambo or no Lambo. And I did very often, not always, but often, and often enough for me to start paying attention. How is your skill as far as communication? How much people respond to you on the phone? Or on Zoom, in person. When this is over, we're going back. Some of it will be personal interaction. That's a skill you need to develop. So go back to it. Get good at it. There's no talent in it. I am a living proof. Friends, please hear me and believe me. You don't need talent. You need skills. Now, if you're as handsome as me, that helps. Yes, sure. But, you know, I'm kidding. It's a skill. The second skill develop is follow-up. If you're like me, my follow-up was a disaster. I would work my ass off, generate leads, and then little by little, they got lost. They just kind of ran away. Somebody else would pick them up. So work on your follow-up. When you follow up with that person, when you text, when you call, when you talk to them, do they enjoy the conversation? Do they walk away feeling like, wow, he really cared. That was really interesting. Or he, there was something helpful. There was something insightful. Or at least it was pleasant. It's a skill. It's just another skill. How about your listing presentation? If... The same seller, John, says, 
come on over. Let's talk about selling my house. How is your ability to say, here's the price, here's the marketing, this is what we're gonna do, this is what needs to be done as far as the property, I'm your guy. Now, you won't use those words, but that needs to be the message. Because if you don't trust yourself, if you're not confident enough in your skills and abilities, how in the world do you expect the seller to? So where are you? Rate yourself on one to five, give yourself an honest review, and then this is the best part. Wherever you score less than five, that's the skill you're gonna focus on. So you're gonna find a partner, you're gonna find somebody else, could be in your office, could be in your area, it doesn't matter. In this day and age, it doesn't matter. I can be practicing with uh, uh, agent from Portugal if I want to and start practicing, work on it. Fire up Zoom like we're on Zoom right now and see how you deliver a good listing presentation. Is it under 30 minutes? Is, are you passionate? Are you engaging? Are you asking questions? Is it a conversation or is it that good old sales stick that most agents still deliver? And we're work know. on it. This is a perfect opportunity. Yeah, go ahead. We, we have a question from Nick. He, he asked, how do you build your communication skills that you talked about? That's a fantastic question. I'll give you three things that helped me tremendously. One, I had my friend Tony in my office and every morning we would for 20 minutes role play back and forth. So we would set up a situation, let's say a for sale by owner. This is my follow up call to a for sale by owner. Can we role play? And we would just go back and forth. Not much critiquing or analyzing, just doing it. Just doing it and watch how just a few of these sessions will give you more confidence, will give you the ability to really hear what's between the lines. Where is the hesitation? When you lose them? How you engage them back? The best questions to ask. So that's number one, role play. Number two, get one of these. Let's see if I have one here. Yes, I do. Buy one of these. This is a small little digital recorder. Amazon, 30 bucks. Record yourself. First time I recorded my communication, I'm like, oh, dude, how is that possible? That's not me. That can't be. I got the wrong thing. That was me. <laughs> what I thought I had sounded like, what I actually sounded like, two different things. See, in my mind, I thought I'm asking the right questions. I'm smooth. They love me. I'm paying attention. I'm in control. I'm doing it perfectly in my mind. When I heard it, not so much. So get one of these bad boys, listen to yourself, listen to the role play sessions, listen to the actual calls. You don't want to record the call what the other person is saying. That's not relevant because you don't control it anyway. But you can record yourself. Pay attention. What you want is, is there authenticity? Am I passionate? Am I paying attention? Am I having a conversation or am I in my head trying to get in the point of the conversation? What do I going to say next? How am I going to close them? Is it disjointed? And you can hear all that. And you can very quickly improve based on what you hear. Now, this is not just to beat yourself up. This is also pay attention to what you're doing well, because I guarantee you, every single one of you guys watching this, there are certain things you do well already. Build on those. Those are your strengths. Yeah, Barino, you know, as you mentioned this, when you think about the superstars in any industry, yeah. take, take the highest paid of athletes, right? Tom Brady, LeBron James, the goats of different industries, what do they do after the game? They, they watch the tape and they analyze it. And they're looking at what they did well and how they maneuvered to score that point, you know, uh, throw that touchdown pass, but they're also looking at where they made errors so that they can improve upon it. So That's a really good point, Alex, not to mention they practice. Mm -hmm. Like what made Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, I mean, they were fanatical on, on uh, practice. That's a very good point. I also have a book here. This is a guy I love and respect a lot as a business person, as a thinker, Steve Jobs. And if you have not, if you want to get some good inspiration when it comes to presentations, check out Steve. You can check it out on YouTube when we finish. Stay here. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. But when we finish, watch his presentation on YouTube when he first reveals the iPhone. It's such a brilliant study of how to do a good presentation. Now, Steve, my man, very casual, throwing a few jokes. There were actually a couple of technical glitches. The phone was overheating. It was not working properly. But it's a phenomenal presentation. The crowd just eats it up. He was legendary when it came to presenting the iPad and the Macs and all that. And, you know, given that I'm completely covered in Apple products here, they're doing a pretty good job as far as selling. 
But what you may not know about Steve is that even though it sounded very casual and very conversational and non-salesy at all, he was fanatical in practice. He would practice weeks before the actual keynote he would deliver. And he would practice everything from the way he would hold the phone, where he would stand, everything was practiced. But you couldn't tell just watching it. My man was selling like it was smooth, it was brilliant. It's practice. So just develop a habit, make it part of your job. Imagine you work for a boss who tells you, in order for you to make 300,000 this year, you're gonna spend 20 minutes a day practicing. Would you do that? Of course, I'm, or they will fire you. So make it a vital, essential part of your job, of your career, to just get good at this stuff. And I'm a living proof, guys. If I figure this out and I learn how to do this and develop a skill, you can too, because there really is no talent. I mean, yes, there, you know how one in a million, you have that natural person who's just so good with people and so easygoing and everybody likes them. And, but for the most of us, it's a skill we need to develop. I, my natural tendency at the beginning was I was very introverted, very shy. I was embarrassed by my accent. I was embarrassed that I didn't know much about real estate. And it was all just developing these skills. But it's also proof that if I could do it, every single one of you can do it. There are no secrets other than what I'm giving you now. Yeah? Sabrina, what was that third tip? So, so the first one was, was to role play. The second one was to get the voice recorder. So get the voice recorder, role play. And the third one is do it a lot. Okay. Do it a lot where you're willing to suck. See, my big ego always wants me to succeed the moment I pick something up. Whether it's when I started riding motorcycles, I started riding bikes. I'm a big fan of motorcycles. I have a big, uh, big Yamaha uh, uh, Venture, Star Venture, a big cruiser. And I started when I was 14. And my first bike was a little moped. They're called Babetta. And they were a little moped, you know, a little one of those look like, I don't know, like lawnmower engine. Well, that funny noise. And I got it for my 14th birthday. And we lived in an area, this was back in, in Czechoslovakia. It was on a hill. My parents had a big house on a hill and there was this windy road coming down. The road turned, there was their garage and the road continued downstairs, down, down, down the hill. And I would get on the, on the motorcycle. It started, I was all excited, you know, it was kind of like bicycle with an engine. And I'm coming down that hill and I came way too fast, way too hot on that turn. And instead of making the right hand turn, I slammed right into the garage door. I mean, we're talking like face first, bam, right into it. And I smashed it pretty good, hit my head, nothing serious, but it was a good lesson for me that kind of carried throughout my life. That at the beginning, I suck. At the beginning of learning riding a motorcycle, I sucked and I smashed 10 minutes into riding it. Be okay with that. It is a skill, but it is a journey. There is no leap. Like when I started calling expired listings, you should have heard it. I mean, I wish, you guys remember the movie Borat? Remember that? With Sasha Baron Cohen? That's what I sounded like. That was me. And I was terrible at it. It was, it was a disaster. But I understand, or I understood, and I still do, that it is a journey and it is a process, whether it's communication, whether it's your ability to, to talk to expired listings or following or whatever. And there is no moment where you're like, I'm going to get in and pff, I'm perfect. Think sports, think golf. If I go on a golf course right now and never play golf in my life, I can be all visualizing and optimistic and I can have goals and vision boards and all that. That's not going to help me because I don't have the skill. But what if I went on a golf course every day for the next 30 days? Would I get better? Not a pro level, obviously, but much better than day one. So your first conversation with expired listings even after role playing and doing all these things, recording yourself, is not gonna be the same as your 50th conversation. Be okay with the journey. Don't beat yourself up. Don't pay too much attention. I mean, if you get good results right away, uh, great, that's a bonus. But understand it's this massive action you're taking every day with repetition that's gonna help you get better. My daughter plays piano. She started five years ago. Hot crust buns, first few months. It was painful. It was hard. So for me to put Chopin in front of her on her first week of piano would be ludicrous. There's no way she could have pulled that off. Today she plays beautifully. But it was a journey. So the third thing you need to understand is you're going to take these little baby steps every day. 
taking action, taking action, not be too attached to the fact that it may not work exactly the way you would like it to. There are certain things you will not control, whether you're gonna get a listing, you're gonna get an appointment, you don't control that, but you're building these skills and you're progressing and you're getting into this habit of being better, listening, communicating, and even with rejection, which is unavoidable, absolutely guaranteed it's gonna happen, you're just gonna keep going. You're gonna stay with it, you're gonna keep going, you're not gonna get deterred by the outside forces, especially if 90% of those you don't control. What you do control is, will you make another call? Will you get better? Will you work on yourself? And are you willing to tell the price, pay the price? Because the price is high, no matter what. Price is high. Calling like expired listings can be tedious, can be boring. 90% of the time, they're not gonna pick up the phone. Some of them will be rude to you. That's a given. Are you willing to pay the price? There is always a price to pay. So, Maria, uh, Yes, sir. I have a question for you. Please. Going back to point number one of mindset. Yeah and then tying it together with what you've got now. One of the things that I've seen in a repeated fashion, uh, you know, not only on my team, but on other teams, is taking it personally, getting defeated. And I always go to uh, the four agreements and talk about number two and explain to the team that you don't know what's going on in their day. They might have not just been rude to you. They might have literally told you off and told you that you were no better than the gum on the bottom of their shoe. Uh, but you don't know what happened to them. You don't know what experience they went through, if they just got in a fight with their spouse that morning, if they got fired from their job the day before, so to not take it personally. So how do you tie that back to mindset? And what would you say is a good exercise to get over that, to make that next call with the smile on your face and the same enthusiasm you had before you just got told off? What a great question, Alex. That's a really good point. And sometimes it's hard. And it's very easy for me to come here and tell you guys, don't take it personally. They don't know you, they don't care. Yeah, it still hurts and it hurts physically and it hurts in your stomach. And we all been there, we know what it feels like. As a movie actor, I was cast to do a film that takes place in France where I fall in love with this beautiful young girl. And in one of the scenes, she has this beautiful white horse and I'm supposed to ride the horse and the horse leaps over this ditch and I fall down, I fly off the horse. And because I have an ego the size of Empire State Building, I'm like, no stuntman, I will do the stunt myself. I will train and I will do it. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. For those of you guys who ride horses, you know what I'm talking about. Falling off a horse is no joke. <laughs> it's a big fucking beast that moves really fast and you can really get hurt. Mama, I want to do the shot. And the director, she was really pleased. She's great. We're going to set it up. It's going to be fun. And so we started rehearsing it. Now in rehearsals, I, I went to this beautiful place with gorgeous horses and they would set it up like this horse would just like gently gallop and they would set up these mattresses, these special pads that I roll on, you know? And I was like, dude, I got this, this is no big deal. And then one day it was on a Saturday afternoon, there were about five of us there and it's like, we have this uh, place we go, you, you ride by the river and it's gorgeous, there are these trees and it was a wonderful day and come with us we're going to ride it's going to be a lot of fun so they put me on a horse but it wasn't the white horse i was rehearsing on this one was different and i should have known by the name that this horse might have some personality issues where it'll be interesting the horse name was nero like the roman empire emperor <laughs> i should have known so we're going and it's a lot of fun. There are five of us, big group. And then as we get out to the open, the horses feel the freedom, the open space, and they take off like rocket ships. And now we're going full tilt. There's a part where the river turns and there were these, these bushes and trees. And I was the second horse. There was a horse in front of me and I got smashed with a branch right here in my chest. And I went flying off that thing. And it was nothing like that soft, gentle into the pads fall. I came down hard and a horse behind me, normally a horse would not hurt you. Their, their instinct would be to avoid human and not hurt it. But because we were in so fast, we were in the turn and we we're going quite close together, he struck me unintentionally. I'm in pain and I'm freaked out. They turn around, they're being my horse back. And I'm like, I am done. I was really shook up, knocked the wind out of me, as you can imagine. My shoulder is like in total pain. And the guy who was the leading trainer, he was the first horse, he says, back up. I'm like, what? He says, back on a horse. 
I'm like, are you out of your mind? I am never getting back on the horse. Back on the horse. Because he knew that with every minute I didn't get on that horse would be a minute that would make it difficult to the point where I would never get back on. And he was right. I got back on. We made it back. And because of that, I can still ride and I still enjoy horses. I don't go to ride as much anymore. It seems like motorcycles replace that. But the lesson is that there will be times, I promise you, I guarantee you, that somebody's going to chew your ass off. Somebody's going to be rude. Somebody's going to be nasty. And you're right, Alice. That we, somebody who has no idea who you are, they may have to get a flattened tire or their kid might get out an F in math or marriage is falling apart or they're losing their house. There can be all kinds of circumstances or they might just be an asshole. There are people like that out there. What you do, what worked for me, is just like from that horse. You shake it off. You allow yourself two-minute rule. You can bitch, scream, dance, do whatever to change your state. And what I do, and this is what I learned from Tony, is I use my physiology. Like, notice right now, guys, as I'm talking to you, I'm standing up because it's a different energy. I use my body. So same thing. If you have a bad call or if you feel like you really hit the wall, use your body. Before I go live, and I do these lives almost daily, record a lot of videos, I have this whole ritual where I jump up and down and I use my body to get into that good state. You do the same. If the call gets derailed, if you get really slammed, allow yourself two minutes, use your physiology, take a few deep breaths, and remind yourself, why am I in this? I know it's going to suck at times. I know somebody's going to be rude. So when it does happen, you can't act like, oh, shit, I can't believe this is happening. It's part of the deal. Because the ultimate choice you're making, and this is something I learned in the military, you got to pick your suck. You've got to pick your suck. When I was broke, homeless, and pretty desperate, pretty kind of like, fuck, look, look at my lifestyle. I mean, I packed everything I have in the trunk of a Cadillac DeVille parked behind a liquor store in Pico River, California, where I sleep. It sucked. It was scary. It was difficult. And it was embarrassing. Like, where are the big dreams I had about America where people back home would be all impressed with the villas and all? It sucked. When you make money, it's going to be hard. Either way, it's going to be hard. Having a nine to five job, being stuck in some fucking cubicle, doing work you don't care about, working for a job who's an asshole working on stuff that doesn't matter just to trade a paycheck for two days of freedom sucks. Being a super successful rock star real estate agent, I'm blessed I have trained many of you now to a level where they make 700, 800,000 million. It sucks. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of shit you got to deal with. There are a lot of clients who don't appreciate you. There are a lot of deals who are gonna, they, they're going to fall apart at the beginning or at the end. And there are times it sucks. You got to pick your suck. Now, I've been on both ends and in between. What this offers you that this does not, and that's the reason I'm here every day, and that's the reason I keep doing what I'm doing, is because this will give you the freedom that you don't have here. Because unlike many thinkers who want to tell you money cannot buy you everything, I'm here to tell you, money will buy you everything. Money is the key to everything. To better family life, because I can take my wife on vacations. I can provide a nice home, nice cars, nice things that make us happy. Better health, because I can hire the best personal trainer. I can have the best doctors. I can have the best gym memberships. I can have the education and private lessons for my kids. Money is the road to freedom. It doesn't change you. It just gives you more options. I like that. Not to mention that sense of satisfaction. I'm fucking doing my best. I'm not squandering opportunities. I'm going for it. And yes, there'll be failures and detours and things will not go according to your plan. But I want you to look in the mirror at night. Look yourself in the mirror and you say, I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best for me, for my family, for the people who matter, for my clients, for my community. And consequently, for the world, that's my contribution. I'm not sitting on my ass. 
I'm out there hustling. And it may not always be pleasant, easy, or profitable, but this is the best I can do. This is my contribution. Because at the end, that feels better than any other victory I know of. Yeah. Excellent. All right. I know we did have a question of, uh, they were wondering what planner you use. Oh, the planner I use is called a full focus planner. I just buy it on Amazon. It's like 35, 40 bucks. And it's a 90 day planner where you plan. There's like a daily planner, weekly review, monthly planner. There are different sections. And I like it very much. I, I've been using, my wife turned me onto it. And uh, it has like annual goal section. You can break down your week. It, it allows you to kind of analyze the week, see what worked, what didn't work. I really enjoy it. Full focus plan. So check it out. It's on Amazon. I'm trying to figure out. There's a smart guy who put this together. That I'm oh, Michael Hyatt. That's the guy. Yeah. So you might have read Michael's books. He's a, he's a smart, smart dude who put this together. Full focus plan. Yes. Anything else? Do you guys want to know anything else? Reno, have you changed anything in, in terms of what you're coaching your clients on right now to, to adjust? Is there any adjustments and changes you're recommending at this time? Wow, good question. Excellent question, Felix. Yes. Uh, in addition to what we talked about, I say double down. Do not compromise your goals. Double down what it takes. That means more lead generation, more follow-up, do more. Because that's what it takes. That's number one. Number two, because there are certain things we can do, do the best you can with what you have. So when we talk about presentations, how good are you presenting on Zoom? Can you deliver a rock solid presentation on Zoom? Buyer presentation, seller presentation, contract negotiation. You gotta tighten that up because it's important. And because you don't have the luxury of face-to-face, -face, you gotta do the best you can on Zoom. So work on that. Uh, next, I'm gonna give you there. Certain doors are shut right now. They will reopen, but they're shut. Like you can't do open houses right now but there are other opportunities. Like think, who can use your advice and help right now? Could landlords who are struggling with tenants or vacant properties, could use some advice and some guidance? The answer is yes, that may, may be a phenomenal opportunity right now. Non-unoccupied properties, tenant occupied properties. Can you talk to those owners and can you provide some guidance, some insight? Because if things will go the way they are, there's a good possibility many of them say, well, I can afford to hold on to this property or I want to get rid of it or something else. So look into these opportunities. Next, I'm going to give you, if you have the budget, learn the skill. It's just another skill. Get on Facebook and advertise. Advertising on Facebook right now is cheap. I know the guidelines as far as real estate ads are tight and it's difficult to get your ads approved. We're in the same boat. We run Facebook advertising and it can be a bitch. But the rates are low. The competition is low. The opportunity is there. The last thing I'm gonna give you is be visible on social media right now. Post like a mofo, go crazy. Videos, memes, pictures, comments, go heavy because that's where the people are right now. We are all on lockdown. We panel between Netflix and social media. So you have a big audience at the moment. That's why I teach the video bootcamp right now because video is one of the easiest ways to convey who you are, what you do, why people like you and you can be trusted. So double down on social as well, and both paid and free. Not to mention your, your sphere, your circle of sphere of influence. Everybody's home, everybody's bored. Talk to people. Talk to a lot of people. The more people you talk to, the better. You can't overdo it. Wow, that's, that's great advice. Very simple and very executable. Thank you. I so mean, the whole business is not that complicated, guys. It is not that complicated. I'm not saying it's easy. It's easy. This is a difficult business. This is a challenging business, no question. But it's not complicated. It really is just find people who need some guidance and some advice and some help, build trust and relationship with them, and then help them get paid to rinse repeat. Absolutely. Is that helpful? Very helpful. Extremely helpful. Timely information, especially what we're going through right now. And it's going to blow over. Now, two things can happen. Three, really, but two. Either the unemployment will go through the roof, the economy will collapse for time being, and the market will tank. That's a possibility. I saw it twice already, 89 and then 2007. You guys probably remember some of you. There will always be people who need to think about it this way. 2007, one of the shittiest, if not the worst possible year in real estate in the US in the recent history, right? Would you agree? Yeah. 
we still closed 4.2 million transactions. In the worst year, 4.2 million transactions closed in 2007. So let's say the worst possible thing will happen. There'll still be people who need to buy, who need to sell. You're gonna serve those. You just need to figure out the skills and tools to find them, connect with them, and help them. So market can tank, that's possible. That means you're gonna brush up on your short sale skills, on your bank on skills, on your negotiation skills. You're gonna adapt. I hate the word pivot. It's so fucking overused. It drives me crazy for some reason. You adapt. You keep an eye on the market. You see what's going on. You evaluate where are the opportunities. There are always opportunities. And you serve that market who needs you, where, where you need it, okay? Now, let's say the market stays about the same. Yay, we'll keep going. Focus on listings. It's always the listings game. Now, let's say the market will keep going up. There'll be a tight inventory, a lot of demand. Prices will rise. Like in my area, they went up 7.2% in the last 12 months. That may continue. Yay, that means good listing is money in the bank. Fantastic, we'll just keep going. What I'm saying is this, no matter where this is gonna go, there will always be opportunities. There will always be people who need your help, who need to buy and sell and move. And there will always be a big financial reward for people who know how to find people who need help, how to help them, and how to create a systematic process around it without too much emotional involvement. Yeah? Great. We've got two questions here. Uh, sure. One actually is, did Barina go over the fifth strategy or did he just miss it? Ooh. We were kind of rolling through them pretty quick and then there's another question after that. That was the fifth strategy is okay. be present on social media every single day. Right. Now, question I get asked, what about TikTok? Because I talk a lot about YouTube and I talk a lot about Instagram and Facebook. If your audience is on TikTok, you should be there. If you have evidence that your audience is on that platform, be, you guys, I like to watch nature shows with my kids. We watch Discovery a lot. And if you watch the migration of the salmon in Alaska, it's fun to watch because what the bears do is nothing. They literally don't have to do anything. They simply stand in the stream. Have you seen those shots, those pictures? And all they have to do is open their mouth. <laughs> and the salmon literally just leap into their mouth. Why? Because the bear is where the fish are. So do the same. If your audience, if your demographic audience is on Facebook, be on Facebook. Awesome. If they're on Instagram, be on Instagram. Be where the fish is. Don't try to go where it's fun and sexy. Go where the business is. Give you another example. Where I live, I'm just outside of Washington, D.C., in Northern Virginia, in a place called Lake Barcroft. And we literally have this lake, and there are like homes around it. A lot of people here are much older. They're in their 50s, unlike me, and not very socially active. They're not too much into them Facebooks and Instagrams. So a lot of smart agents figure out other ways. Now, right now, they don't do it, but a lot of open houses in the area and a lot of direct mail. That's how they reach their audience. That's how they communicate. And that's how they get a boatload of listings. And listings here are in high demand. They sell multiple offers sight unseen sometimes. So go where the fish are. Facebook, most solid. YouTube, solid. Instagram, solid. And the rest, evaluate. Maybe LinkedIn, maybe others. So but be there constantly. Gary Vee, who I love and admire, posts between 40 and 60 pieces of content a day. Mm -hmm. So you can't over you can't come even close. So flood the gates. So effectively build your, your avatar, who your yes. audience is, and then cater to where they are. So if I was selling, you know, let's say uh, men shaving products, I probably don't want to advertise on Lifetime. I want to advertise on sports. <laughs> Perfect. That, right. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. And then the last question we'll wrap up on this is what about being sensible in this time and not stuffing real estate, selling down people's throats and rather just making friendship connections? Oh, I love, I love the way you phrase it, Alex. Actually, Never. somebody else, they wrote that. I can't take credit. Ray, oh, okay. <sighs> Whoever wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> Never do you have to be salesy, shove real estate down their throats, close them, be the typical salesman. There is never a need for that. I believe only people who are too lazy, complacent, or desperate, who don't have the skill, use these kind of strategies. I tried them. I went through the training. My broker put me through like a two-week free training by a coach who probably you guys know. I tried it, and I'm like, if I have to say this shit for the rest of my life, I can't be in real estate. It was uncomfortable for me. It was uncomfortable for the people I was talking to. It's just not my personality. And I feel like you can treat people with respect 
and still get a lot of business. Okay, so you don't need to do any of that. But with that said, of course, be sensitive to it. And if a seller tells you, dude, we're going to wait this out. Remember, the COVID-19 is not an objection. It's not an objection. So there's not like a clever line you're going to deploy and like, yeah, we're going to list house. Condition. Right? It's a condition. It's a, and if they have the luxury to wait it out, yeah, in many cases, in most, I would venture to say, let them wait it out. That doesn't mean you cannot communicate with them. You cannot be in touch with them, build relationship with them, establish your uh, authority, be the helpful advisor where they have a friend in the business in you. That's all doable. That's a great opportunity to do that. And if it's going to take a few weeks, awesome. If it's going to take a few months, okay. That's what follow-up is for. That's where your business is going to come from anyway. Now, hear me on this. Some doors will be shut. These will be the people who say, we don't have a problem waiting six months. That's fine. But it will also open a new window for you. People who three months ago, six months ago, didn't think about moving, who now have to. Whether it's job situation, whether it's personal situation, whatever. There will be people out there who say, virus, virus, we got to move. Those are the people you're going to serve now. But yes, of course, you will be sensitive to it. You will explore all the possibilities. And that's why the good communication skill we talked about earlier is so vital. You will develop the ability to have an open, honest communication with these people and determine what's best for them. What is the best outcome? Because you as a pro, can you get a household today? Yes or no? Of course you can. It's different. It's challenging, but it can be done, right? It's done all day long. So if that's the best thing for them, fantastic. We got tools and you explain to them, here's how we do it. So you're protected. So I'm protected. And yet we can still find the ideal buyer and get it done. So you introduce all these tools that you use and all these precautions. Brilliant. Those who will wait, fantastic. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to keep in touch with you. I'm going to stay on top of the market. But, and this is important, your job as an advisor and a high status guide in this, if you notice signs, and this is why being educated and watching the market is so important, you still see signs that is starting to slide. It is your responsibility to communicate that to the seller. Now, and this is important, not as a fear mongering. You better so now or you're going to lose your shirt. No. But you need to tell them. Just be aware, John, that there are indications that this market is going down. Because you don't want to be the person who they call and said, why didn't you tell me? How come you didn't tell me? I thought you knew what was going on. I thought you were a real estate expert. Okay, so pay close attention, watch for the signs. What is the market absorption rate? What is the days on the market? What is your median sales price? What is the median sale, uh, list price? Is the inventory going up? Is it going down? Where is this all going? What about interest rates? What about buyer demand? Talk to other agents, subscribe to something like uh, Keeping Current Matters. That, that is a good resource. Check on um, MSNBC Finance. There is all these resources that will start indicating what will happen. Now, this is the second part to that. Nobody really knows where this is going to go. Whoever you hear tell you, this is where we're going to be because of unemployment, because this and that, nobody knows. Even the smartest, smartest, smartest people who've been at this for very long are scratching their going, what the fuck? <laughs> they don't know. And it can go either way. Your job is to pay attention to what are the signals, what is the general direction, and what that means. And this is important. You don't provide information for your clients. There's plenty of information. They can go on Zillow and get information. They can go everywhere where you can to get information. What they need is two things, insight and certainty. And that's what's going to completely separate you from all the other crowds. What the difference is, information is, we have 47 listings on the market right now. What insight is, this is about the same as last year, which means, and you explain to the seller what it means to them. In other words, information plus meaning to the seller, plus suggestions, plus explanation is insight. That's what they're looking for. And what they're also looking for, the second thing, is certainty. No speculation, no manipulation, no sales job, certainty. Where you with certainty can tell them, would you like to sell now? I can make it happen. Would you like to wait? That's fine too. That's the kind of certainty. And that's the rock star that is very different from your typical average real estate agent. Good news is, guys. A lot of those who either shouldn't have been in this business in the first place or don't belong in this business will get washed out. So yes, the pie has shrunk and it's gonna stay smaller for time being. But it also means your competition is reduced by a big chunk. 
That means there's more opportunities for you, especially for those of you who are like me in it for a long term, not just to make a quick buck, who are willing to do what it takes, who are willing to work on the skill, work on the insights, work on the confidence, you can be unbeatable and unstoppable. And I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I am convinced of that. Will it require more? Yes. Is it worth it? 100%. Yeah. Bigger slice of the smaller pie. Yes. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. And I'm sure everybody else on here thanks you as much as I do. And Felix, if you want to close it out. Sure. Brino, you know, I, I think the biggest takeaway I took away was, wow, you can have a great positive mindset and still be understanding of people and the situation that they're in right now. And, Absolutely. and I hope that everyone watching this broadcast live or on replay really gets that. You can have a positive mindset. You can uh, be there to help people, give great advice, give great information, but, but not be salesy, not jump on them. Uh, not force them into doing an action, not, not using fear and panic and emotions to get them to, to force them to sell. So, so that was really, really beautiful how you put it. And I would add one more thing to it. You can make a lot of money. And you should not apologize for it. You should not try to hide the fact that this is how you pay your bills and feed your family. It's perfectly all right. And I promise you guys, there are plenty of people out there who would gladly pay you the money you ask for if you deliver, like Felix explained, without being salesy, manipulative, or difficult, or just a douche. Excellent. Well, everybody knows what to go out and do now. Listen yep. to his advice and go crush it. Great. Thanks for having me, guys. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. If I can help you in any way, reach out, let me know here on the Facha book or on YouTube, whichever way I can help you, guide you, inspire you. Don't be a stranger. Don't hesitate. Excellent. Thank you so much for your time today. Much, Marina. Take care. Ciao. Thanks, Marina. Bye-bye.